Hey y'all, it is below negative one in Minnesota this weekend. May you all be comfy with car starters, really big ear muffins, and uh, a little bit of sanity coming out of this week. So there's been a lot of energy, a lot of energy moving with the new moon and the phases in Capricorn. We had the BTC and the ETF go live on the markets this week. That's another story for another time. And by the way, if you're on my Twitter, I did drop a tarot reading, a three card poll on that situation that you can learn more there or on my Twitter account. But I had some channeling this morning and I wanted to just land it here in the top off of this weekend's newsletter and much around the order of chaos and our perception of our own chaos in our lives the way we view our maybe dark shadow, people talk about shadow work. I think we need to talk more about light work and finding everything that's good with us. Cause my friends, the reality is all of humanity is perfect, including you, you are perfect as is, but it doesn't always feel that way. So the more I ponder the amounts of perceived chaos and disharmony and how it's impacting us all at different levels, the more I wonder, is chaos really, truly random? Now, in high school, I would have called myself now knowing as my older self, looking back at my younger self, I certainly had ADHD. I call that a higher dimension. I just see a, a heightened state. So I'm always hyper aware in my creative mind. But now I'm starting to fall in love with math because math and frequency is what runs our universe. So what if chaos is actually a pattern we can't see this hidden order beneath the surface where our perception of chaos might stem from perhaps a failure to grasp some bigger picture or plan. So again, I ask, could our understanding be the thing that is limited. So I want to take a look at this bio spiritual human template, because when our body perceives toxicity, be it physical or emotional or mental or energetic, it's like a signal of imbalance, a sign that the chaos has tipped over the edge. So this current awakening for many of us, especially those that convene in the different pockets of communities that you and I have maybe crossed paths in, and maybe haven't, but this awakening has brought us to a beautiful and necessary wake-up call, a wake-up call through a portal to restore balance. And I just love this powerful analogy with biology is that when a proton loses an electron, it becomes toxic. Losing our inner balance then can lead to toxicity in our lives. So even shutting and letting go of negative energy needs a balance of good to bring back in. So all of these concepts can really tie together beautifully, reminding us that life is a complex dance of chaos and order, positive and negative, inside and out. And maintaining that balance is key to navigating this sailing ship. So just think for a moment with that analogy, if you're pushing off all of this wonderful, beautiful, good energy, the reality is the law of hermetics, the seven universal principles, you are also living in polarity. Therefore you also have a dark side and that's okay. It's how we move in this earthly realm and express both. It's okay to acknowledge, but how do you express? It doesn't mean suppress. It means how do you express? Meaning if you have too much darkness and you need to let in the light. So it goes both ways. So moving into navigating the sailing ship brings me to another premise as a one-eyed pirate. And the analogy here is that physically losing an eye this comes down to biology again. 
it compromises the depth perception and that depth perception from lacking both the perspectives in the visual field. And this impacts the lens of your past and future. What's not so obvious is that past trauma is stuck in the holographic body to focusing too much on external technology, perhaps, can make us binary. It, it brings in the narration based on a childhood that is not truly you to keep a paycheck for survival. So for example, the modern day female as an overachiever starts to only see with the execution eye and slowly blowing away our sweet feminine essence. True story. Where the left eye connects to the right brain associated with creativity and intuition. So losing the left could symbolize limiting those aspects. So the eye symbolizes perspective, both physical and spiritual. Losing one represents a biased perception from an unbalanced view. So this left eye represents femininity of that intuition, the right masculinity of rationality. And losing the left may symbolize restricting the feminine. So overall, losing an eye affects physical sight, cognitive functions, connecting to brain and the brain's functions and the symbolic perception of an understanding of the world. And I just thought that was so beautiful because as your brain through the visual perception shuts down a side of your brain, you become imbalanced. So moving through eye for an eye and you are the mirror. And I wanted to just state this piece because I've been seeing it in Twitter spaces and telegram channels and personal conversations, and maybe you've thought it yourself. My family and friends, oh, they're all asleep. And I say that, and then I say, said your ego. Because as we close this final next stage of awakening, and I call that the economic system, check the heart on this internal urge to wake others up to inner peace. Because the reality is that it deeply distorts relationships. And so I'm gonna give you just a loving, true suggestion that I take to heart for myself is to resist the temptation to push them into it. Because forcing experiences they're not ready for can cause lasting trauma. And so the best way to help others is just be yourself. Live authentically and let positive changes inspire curiosity in those around you. That is what will help them seek guidance, whether it's in you or somewhere else. Allow others to start asking questions and seeking their own understanding. We're moving out of an information world and into a spiritual world. And in a world of influencers, living your unique life is one of the most strongest invitations for others to do the same. So share your stories, be genuine to your heart, and let your inspiration start to flow naturally again. So I just wanted to share that because, of course, we don't want to conform to expectations, but when we really think about it as pioneers, that bring bridges these two worlds together. They're the ones that play and have great hope. And it's the consciousness that is found in laughter and celebration and enjoying life. So embrace your uniqueness, find your uniqueness, have fun and just be yourself. After all, being aware is about being you. So with that, my said, so with that said, my friends, just remember that the contraction offers expansion and interest of this aligned intuition that we're all moving into in this new Aquarian age. So I just want to close it up with our conversation here this weekend to encourage us all to just 
love this next stage of the Aquarius and to bring fortitude to our intuitive insight and sensing beyond the veil. And so I wanted to give you a practical lens of intuition as a first spark of potential, but reality is all about making the shift from information to formation. And it's bringing it into form that it can be difficult in an uncertain journey. Because intuition is the grantor of the vision of possibilities. Realization depends on various factors, including our actions, our timing, tenacity, external influences, commitment, adaptability, and courage are essential in navigating this process. So these visions and images of potential I sense are when I'm with clients concentrated and they're happening more and the channeling is coming in through like water because we step out of the way. We remove ego, we move into neutrality. We understand that we are not the answer. We are the way of the channel to be the vessel, to be that concentrated, emotive and potent offer of possibility to others for their free will. And from a central picture using divination practices such as tarot or oracle has really created a cohesive reflection of both being able to bring this chaos and adherence into coherent. They act as a guide and beacon. So may we see crises of faith as an opportunity to reconnect with our core nature. And from this, your vision allowing the intuition to evolve based on your internal circumstances. So sending you my love, now is your time. You are beloved and you are safe. Love and light. We'll see you on the next one.